that's about to work. Yeah. That's good. That's good though. It's not an accident that you clicked it. Well, for those of us here and those of us viewing on the screen, um, we are looking at our stewardship roles and what stewardship actually means uh, to us as Christians and members of this church. And one of the big things it means is to be a good and faithful servant. And we have two of them with us today, Tracy Clapton, financial secretary, and also she with her husband, Scott, founder of a project that has just yeah. gone almost viral, community effort to serve the victims of the tornado. And we also have with us Bob Mosser, who has led us into the forefront of technology. He has taught many of us. He has been creating things like the uh, fact that we can now watch on a regular basis in our church, the live stream. But he does many other things as well, and as both of these two folks do, as many do in this community of faith, they are invisible. And that's what most of our uh, good and faithful servants are. So I could have this whole room filled with people who are doing things with the devotion and the willingness to give up time and to give part of their life to service to our Lord and to service to this faith community. So we welcome you and those watching later will get a little piece of what you all are up to. So my friend Bob, which I have to say, Bob and I go back years, don't we Bob? Yes. Bob was one of my kiddos, one of my students. So wow. Yeah. Wow. Then and now, good soul. Good soul. Yeah. There's somebody uh, waiting to be. Emily Jeske. Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. We'll see you next week. Okay, you bet. Sunny. Okay, we'll be out. problem because the menu showed up right over mm -hmm. okay. uh, good morning uh, Dottie had asked me to talk about ministries that I'm involved in and um, I'm going to talk specifically about the live stream, but I have a slide that lists different things I'm involved in. You know, I, I, I don't want to come across as if I'm bragging, but you know, um, <laughs> I, I made a list, okay, and the current things I'm involved in um, involved right now with the live stream and I, we've been doing that for about 15 months. I've been on the tech team for nine years and that, that's more like various little projects that come up from now and then. Uh, one of them was, for instance, putting Zoom into this room. And I helped, I did the design work and some of the installation of this. Uh, I've been on global mission uh, for nine years, something I was asked to do by Pastor Lawler when we first joined, and I've been chairperson for the last three. Um, men's retreat, I'm on the planning committee, and I do things like the care of reservations, finances, and I help the guys remember what we did last year, because it's pretty good record. <laughs> um, I'm one of the men of the Glen, the part of the 
I'm a setup team captain for the outdoor services in the summer. Mm -hmm. So that, that's three or four times during the summer that I help set up. And, you know, I, I get a break. I'm, I'm in the meeting. I'm in. I can hear Bob Mosser talking, and there's a Bob Mosser's ministry thing on the screen. And then the picture of the meeting, there only looks like there are only three people. Linda, we can, Linda, we can hear you. You need to mute your. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Okay, that's all right, sweetheart. Sally, Sally Williams and I are joining. Wonderful. I'll, I'll, I will mute. Thanks, sweetheart. And um, okay. I've uh, been, there's a bit up at the top, Donnie. Another one coming in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sally. And um, the, Flea market, I've been involved with that for about eight years. And uh, most of that time has been in the Christmas room, which I kind of enjoy. And things like the flea market uh, is a, a one week commitment. And I know, I know you work in the flea market. It's a busy week. That's your end. But after the week, it's over. Yeah. And you can rest for next year. The event of the plan is just for the summer. But that's not a whole lot. Men's retreats once a year, so a couple of meetings. Um, things like the live stream is every week, and I'll, I'll get into that. And then I've just listed uh, under previous ministries things I was doing before COVID that really haven't come back or I haven't gotten very involved. Uh, and then also I listed a couple of things outside of the church. Uh, I've been involved for 19 years with Philmont Christian Academy, doing tech support for the musical and drama productions. And Judy and I have been involved with Operation Christmas Child for 26 years. Uh, ministry involvement. Why did I get involved? Uh, one or two things, either I was asked to, or I volunteered to, to interest in the project. And why do I stay involved? You know, I have a passion for the ministry, feel fulfilled by the ministry, the impact the ministry is making on other people. I have fun doing the ministry, or sometimes I feel obligated. And now I want to talk specifically about the live stream. And uh, I'm assuming everybody here and online has watched the live stream at some point in time or other. Mm -hmm. So you kind of know what it is. Uh, you can imagine what the impact of the live stream is because you've been able to watch at home. Other people have been able to watch it at home. People that are traveling have watched it. We have regular viewers from North Carolina and so forth. And I did a couple of uh, quick checks and we broadcast out on YouTube and on Facebook. So I don't know how to go in and get the Facebook statistics, but I looked at live stream and in the month of October, um, we had an average of 118 views for each Sunday. Okay, and this Question is either, about when did you start doing the live stream? Coming. Okay. Okay. And um, the 118 views is either people that watched it on live as it was happening or went back and looked at it later. And some of them are, you know, ministry staff or whatever going back in to check to see what it looked like. And that's not 118 people necessarily. That's 118 family units. So there could be more than one person watching. Okay. Last Sunday, we began a second live stream. So that we're now live streaming the 10 o'clock service and we're also live streaming the 8.30 service. Last Sunday, we had 174 total views between the two live streams. Uh, 98 for the 8.30 and 76 for the 10 o'clock. So a lot of people in the congregation have been waiting 
for the contemporary service to come back for more. Um, now, when COVID hit, uh, Pastor Keith didn't miss a beat. We, we locked down the church on Thursday, and that Sunday, he was up on Zoom with the worship service. Say that again, please, so people understand what was involved. Well, what we're doing Zooming now, he was doing Zooming for worship. They had to put together PowerPoint slides to use. They had to coordinate among the pastors that were going to do it. And, you know, we got up and running. And it provided us to get worship opportunities out quickly to the congregation. We had to, and we're doing it, copying it to YouTube. That was good. The bad part of it, about it is that it was requiring pastors to do the tech in addition to worship. And it was a limited format. So live streaming provides us better capability. We've got better quality to YouTube and Facebook. We spent uh, initially $700 to get up and running. And we later bought another camera so for $1,800. So we spent $2,500. I've heard of congregations in the area that have spent upwards of $50,000 to get up and running on live stream. We had existing equipment. We already had a computer in the balcony. We added another computer. Uh, we had a camp order here at the church. Tad brought in a camera of his own to get us up and running. Uh, we had an existing audio system. So we had some cabling. We had to buy some new cabling. And then we went and bought this special camera called a PTZ point tilt zoom camera. So the camera sits there and tilt is up and down, zoom is around, or at, I'm sorry, pan is around and zoom is in and out. And the camera has presets on it. So we set it up to point to the balcony, or I'm sorry, to the pulpit. And then all we have to do after we've got the shot we want is we just hit a button for the pulpit when we want to show that view and the camera automatically moves there. And the camera moves typically in less than a second. Okay, it's a little slower when we have to get the organ in the balcony because the camera has to spin all the way around. And that takes a couple of seconds. Is that manual or automatic? That's it's all automatic because we set it up with presets. Plus we have a control up there that we can sit on the computer and move it left, right, up, down, zoom in and out. How new is this technology? I don't really know. It, it's not all that new. I'm sure this has been around for several years at least. Okay, so we needed software. And there's something called Online Broadcaster Software Studio, which is used by a lot of people that do, um, no. well, home videos or they do podcasts, podcasts video casts, and so forth. And it's freeware. So it didn't cost us anything. And it does the video control and composition and the streaming for us. And we had PowerPoint, which was existing. We started out with a team of four people for the tech support to design, build, put together, and run it. And we're now up to eight people on the team. And this is what Dottie was asking about the history. Okay. We began in August. Design and thought started going into it. I got involved at the end of August. In September, we installed hardware. We configured the online broadcast studio software. We designed OBS scenes. And what, what we do in OBS is a scene, for instance, you see Pastor Keith standing at the pulpit and the words he's saying are on the left-hand side of the screen. Mm -hmm. That is a scene in OBS. Mm -hmm. And we have a hot key and we hit one key and that will come up on the screen. Uh, we have another one that puts the words up with uh, Pastor standing in front of the altar. We have one that gives us the band, one for the 
piano and so forth. And those all had to be designed. And, you know, we started out small and then grew. And we had developed something called the worship script. And I'll show you what one of those looks like later. October 11th was the date we began live stream. Uh, we had to do power and we started out, it was very crude what we were doing at the beginning. And then we sort of refined it as we went, we changed PowerPoint formats. And I don't know if anybody remembers the initial live streams or not. The audio was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it took us till the end of October to find the problem. And it turned out to be a configuration problem. November, we began using the new camera because we had spent October looking for cameras, picking one out, ordering it, it came in and we installed it in November. And then we had to do major updates to the OBS scenes in November to make use of the camera. Because one of the other neat things about the camera is that it will take direction from OBS. So we can select the scene of the pulpit and the words and the camera automatically moves for us. Uh, January, I don't know if anybody remembers or not, but Lindsay went home to Minnesota for January. Yes. And yet she was participating in the live stream. Which is remarkable. Well, in January, we got Zoom configured into OBS so that she could Zoom from Minnesota and it would show up as if she were in the sanctuary yeah. on the live stream. And we did that not only for Lindsay's sake, but we also had the situation we had one Sunday when Pastor Keith was quarantining because uh, one of his children had been exposed to COVID. And we came up with the issue, what happens if something happens and all the pastors have to quarantine? Okay. So that was the other reason we went with Zoom so we could keep going. In May, we did some reconfiguration of the system so we could begin supporting in-person worship in the sanctuary so that people would be worshiping there and not even realize that we're live streaming at the same time. And one of the things it did is it brought more realism. Once we have people in the sanctuary, we have a microphone that picks up the sounds of the sanctuary. So when you're on the live stream, you feel more like you're part of it. And then the beginning of this month, we began the second live stream for the 30 service. Bob, would you share what your other life background was? What did you study to become? Um, my degree is in electrical engineering. Um, I've worked in computer software design and engineering and systems engineering. I don't think I'm alone in saying that God brought you to us yeah. to be and here at this time, at this intersection. I, I've, and audiovisual, or specifically audio, has always been something that I was interested in for a child. Uh, the church I went to when I was a little kid, we used to have Sunday night movies. And there were two men in the church that ran the movie projector. And the one Sunday, neither was going to be there. So they taught my father how to do it so he could run the projector. Okay. I actually ran the projector. <laughs> and I was five years old. <laughs> so it, it, that's something that's always been in my blood. Okay. I want to tell you about the live stream team because people, you probably don't know how much goes on behind the scenes. You see the finished product. We have a studio operator who actually controls the video composition and what goes out on the live stream and the audio. And that's Tad the majority of the time. We have two backups for Tad. I can back up Tad if he's not here for some reason. And Emily Bristol, our digital specialist, has been trained in the system so that she's available for backup. If... Emily's on staff. Yeah. Okay. So. The studio operator controls the audio and video sent to the live stream. He controls the BTZ camera and he does the initialization of YouTube and Facebook. And that, that's probably the worst part of the job on Sunday morning. 
because there's about 30 some steps for each to go through. For that. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, we have six PowerPoint operators on a rotating basis. And the PowerPoint operator controls what slides are shown on the live stream and on the sanctuary screens. And in some cases, there will be stuff on the live stream that's not showing in the sanctuary, and sometimes stuff in the sanctuary that's not showing on the live stream. But we use one slide deck for that. So it's not a terribly difficult job. The biggest thing is you can't fall asleep during the service. <laughs> Yeah, you have to watch. And then every once in a while, one of the pastors will do something. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Keith forgot the Lord's Prayer as part of the community service. Right. And I was the operator that day, studio operator, and I realized what happened. And Jack Priestley was the PowerPoint operator, and he didn't realize, so he's still waiting for the Lord's Prayer. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get his attention because he's on the other side of the balcony. Okay, the first five weeks of live stream operation before we had the new camera, we actually had a camera operator, which was Gary Sprig. And he would move the camera between all the shots we needed. Okay, uh, we have a studio director, okay, which is myself and Elaine Flanagan backs me up. Okay, and I attend to work weekly worship planning production meeting. We have about an hour or so meeting every Wednesday afternoon to put together the, cert, the following service. Um, we create, we're now creating two worship scripts because we have two different services we're doing. Uh, I email out scripts and PowerPoint slides to all the service participants. And then I maintain, modify, and create OBS scenes as we need them. A uh, couple of changes. Uh, we just started the 830 service. This week, the band was the assisting minister. So we needed to set up so that we could get individual shots of band members for the live stream. Because usually we use you know, a uh, landscape shot of the band. And we have the lyrics at the bottom. However, with the words at the side, the landscape didn't work very well. So we had to update that. Uh, and then Elaine Flanagan is our PowerPoint operator. So she puts together the power two, now two PowerPoint decks each week. A lot of the slides are the same between them. And Emily backs up and helps with that. Okay. Do you know off the top of your head who that we can name out loud the um, PowerPoint uh, operators? Yes, uh, Emily, or not Emily, uh, Elaine, myself, Jack Priestin, John Shantner, uh, Chris Tranchata, and I'm missing, and uh, Mike Wood. Okay, and we were actually looking for more. So if oh, any, really? mm -hmm. well, at this point, when we had six, it was, wasn't bad at all when we were doing one service a week. Now that we're doing two services, okay, uh, we'd like to get like maybe three more people at least to help with this. I guess in it, how many people actually are involved in all this now with the volunteers? Um, we have eight. Eight people. Yeah, the six PowerPoint operators plus Tad and Emily. And yourself. Um, yeah, I'm a PowerPoint. And a lot of you wear multiple hats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or we do multiple hats for backups. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bob? Yes. Uh, has any effort been made to reach out to the young people or have any young people showed any interest? Uh, I would love to do that. And uh, one of the things I was thinking of is that Kathleen gets our. Um, seminary student is now mm -hmm. leading the youth group and I was going to ask her to side kind of float the idea and see if we could get any involved. Great. Good oh. point, Sally. Good point. Okay. I have five minutes left. Yeah, yeah I was like, right. Okay. Well, I'm going, well, I think I'm doing great first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do that. Good deal. All right. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you 
is looks a little complicated. This is a worship script. Okay, it's only a part of it. Okay, but if you look at it, the it has a column on there, worship element on the left hand side. And reading down there, we have the announcements, the prelude, the welcome, the announcements that the pastor talks about, confession and forgiveness, the gathering hymn, the reading, canticle of praise, and so forth. So that says what the element is. The next column is where it's taking place. It's at the organ, or it's at the pulpit, or at the altar, or it could be in the chancel area who is involved, so it's Carol or Kath or Keith. Uh, the F is for our field education student because we were using first initials and hers are, her first name is Kathleen, so that, uh, her last name is G, but we're using G for George. <laughs> so she became F, okay. And that tells our talent, basically, our pastoral staff, our assisting ministers, the lector, and so forth, where they're supposed to be. And where they're supposed to be is critical because that's where the camera is pointing. And every once in a while, you'll see on the live stream, you'll see an empty scene. You got a scene, but there's somebody talking and they're not there <laughs> until we get the camera moved because they went somewhere else. Uh, the next thing says the OBS scene that we're using, and then the next column is called hotkey, and that's the single key we have to push on the keyboard to bring up the scene. So, for instance, uh, one the first scene we start with is one, and then you hit the M key, and that moves it to the live stream, because we get a preview on the screen, and so forth. The next column is audio, so that tells us which microphone is supposed to be on. Uh, the next column, PTZ, is, tells us the number of preset we're using for that. And normally that's automatic, but if something happens and you got to move the camera real quick, that tells you where to go. Slides is PowerPoint slides that are being used in that particular scene. And then there's other notes, like what time we start, uh, we, we have rolling announcements on at the beginning, and then at 9.57, we blank the screens in the auditorium, we change the PowerPoint deck to get the regular deck for the service, and meanwhile, the Carol is playing the prelude on the organ, and the camera is pointed with Carol. And then we go on from there, and then at 10 o'clock, when we're ready to start, we unblank the screens, and we move on. I know I can speak for Carol and myself, who are assisting ministers. This is invaluable. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's like Unless your name is Carol, and then you're right. always confused. <laughs> but we, we, we have well, a yes, but you're called lecture. I know. Yeah, or, or AM. AM. Yeah. Or AM. Yeah. Yeah, but it just. It's like a blueprint of where yeah. we need to yeah. be. Yeah. Absolutely. And actually, this was something we developed and during the month of September. <laughs> it had something similar to this that I used over at Philmont for their productions for the audio, which I was involved in, which told them what scene, what was going on, which mics they had to have on and so forth. So we just kind of expanded it and kind of grew a little bit over time. And this is, takes some time to put together each week and go over and make sure there's no mistakes. Um, and actually, when we meet to do the scripts and PowerPoint and so forth, I, I estimated that for every hour of live stream you're seeing, there's about seven to eight hours spent behind the scenes getting ready for, for the operators I running. Can't believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and just, just some final notes, follow on live stream. Our original plan was to first get the live stream up and running. And then we were going to bring in a consultant to help us to create a high quality live stream. Mm -hmm. We never took the second step. Mm -hmm. We got it in, we got it up and running. We said, 
wow, this is pretty good. And then we started having other churches coming to us asking for help. So other churches thought it was pretty good too. So we decided not to spend the money on a consultant. Uh, I've made presentations to several other churches and some Zoom calls and demonstrations. I know Tad's helped at least one other church to get live streams up and running for them. Uh, the Synod has a weekly Zoom meeting on tech for worship. And I've actually done a presentation on our live stream to Synod. And the Synod is coming. Oh, and then based on that, uh, the Synod has a, uh, for rostered ministers, they have a, a uh, what do you call it? It's like a training session that they do periodically. And they're doing one Tuesday and Wednesday this week. They're doing Zoom at four different locations, or you can watch it online from your office or wherever. And Upper Dublin, based on presentations that we did, it was chosen as one of the locations to be the Zoom. So I had actually Bishop's doing her address, opening address from our sanctuary on Tuesday morning. <laughs> Sir, anybody has any questions? Well, I just like to say <laughs> we say thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Uh and anybody listening later, I think will be just blown away by the service that you and your team has given to us over these last months, but even beforehand, you were doing things, but it has been so crucial to our survival. Uh, what you folks have done. And it's basically behind the scenes, which is what is the case with most of our good and faithful servants behind the scenes. Like our next person coming up is, is going to share with us, uh, our Tracy, Tracy Fabham is going to uh, share with you, you uh, all that she does. <laughs> you're, you're looking at two powerhouses here today. Yeah. yeah. If you want to stand here at the camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want to stand or sit? Um, I'll, I'll stand unless, well, actually, you know what? if I can sit, can you move the camera to you down a little bit? Get that pan. Oh, there we go. TV's new camera. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> all right. I'll take my mask off now that I'm here. So um, this all started when Dottie barely finished a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> say so we're doing uh, uh on a, in the adult forum we'll be discussing um ways that god is is working ways that um our ministries are 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 working in the community it's hard for me to know where i'm looking sorry <laughs> um so the tornado relief effort has been just from the very, very beginning, um, God has been with us through every step. I would have to say every single day, there is something that happens that I'm like, that's not just coincidence. There's so much more. It is, it's just been such a powerful and life-changing experience for me. Um, starting from the very beginning, I was in a totally different place, had just sent my baby off to college. We didn't have power, you know, the whole world was disheveled. And then I saw the email about the Waldrons. And it was like, I, I can only describe it as a force bigger than me that just said, we need to act. And quite honestly, I, I feel like the last couple months has just been an extension of that. Um, I placed a phone call, all the pieces fell into place within hours. We had food, we had a way to communicate. We had people signed up on the sign up. Um, 
just an incredible, incredible response. Um, and that was just to get started. Our first night, no one came. It took Scott and I, we live not far away, five minutes, a half hour to get here because of all the roads that were closed. We're like, okay, that tells us something. When we start tomorrow, we need to have a different take on how to do this. So the Saturday came and first of all, it was drop off after drop off. We had put it up on, there a, was a um, helping hands group, the Facebook group that had been started. So we put up on there that, you know, we're, we're here, we're providing, we thought we were providing food and a place to charge your phones, um, which was not what was happening by noon on Saturday. By noon on Saturday, we had people dropping off food and saying, well, can I take this to people because it's hard for people to get to the church. Um, things were still closed down. Susquehanna was still closed down. Butler had been closed down on Friday because it was the first Friday. Um, so, you know, like people didn't even know which way they could go to get to, to the church. So, um, at, on Saturday afternoon, the township held three different neighborhood pop-up meetings. And so we said, all right, let's take those peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that we made and let's take this show on the road. And so Scott, Pastor Keith, the Namiras went out to the different things. I mean, it took them, they were, I mean, over the river, through the woods, the power lines are down, like everything just trying to get to the place so that they could um, sure. share that we're here to help. Um, Saturday morning, it was, the realization, we should have a flyer. We need to let people know, because there's this Helping Hands community that is all excited to be able to help, lining up at the door to drop things off, but we need to find out what the needs are and we need to figure out how we're getting those to the people who were affected. So we threw together the, we are here to help flyer, um, that we would be there through Labor Day weekend, we would be here to help, and went out in, into the community. By Monday, or by, I'm sorry, by Sunday, um, we had established within the different neighborhoods depots. So, Frank on Heart Ramp, we had Marriott Bell Lane. We had different places where we would check in give them a call, say, you know, what are you seeing? What are you needing? And those answers changed. When I say by the hour, I mean by the hour. I mean, it would be, we need tarps. I'd go up on helping hands and say, uh, we need tarps and pip towels. I don't think I hit send and they were walking in the door. It was just incredible. And like trying to stay where we were getting the information that, that we needed to, communicate to those that wanted to help. Like we were basically this big connecting space where people dropped off, people picked up. Um, the next big thing that happened were we were determined that so many people had water damage. Um, even if they hadn't been tornado, you know, a direct hit lost part of the house, people had so much water. Um, so we started doing getting storage bins for people to put their clothes in. Because once you've gone through a sopping wet, on the verge of moldy cardboard box that has all your clothes in it, they have to then go wash to put in something. You really don't want to put it back in a box and put it back down in that basement. Um, so we identified that as a need. Um, contractor bags, they were doing so much outdoor cleanup. Um, contractor bags, leaf bags, rakes, gloves. Um, Gatorade and water for what, what, where we thought the food need would be for people to um, be making food to eat themselves, a larger, not a larger, but a component of it was helping the people who were out volunteering and going from house to house, the, what became the chainsaw gang, um, giving them what they needed to keep fueled and going. Uh, we found hot cold bags at the dollar store that worked fabulously, like 
just wonderful. And through all of this, it was a person walks in with walked in with an idea that oh this is this is what we can do this is how we can can use this this is how we can distribute this and it was listening and just letting letting things just evolve and and change um you all know i'm a financial secretary so you can imagine <laughs> the the type A person in me who expects to know, well, what, what are all the steps and what's the end game and when is that due and when is this? This whole experience has changed me in that I don't have a note card with anything highlighted in front of me right now. It's, it's created just, um, I trust in a way I think I never, trusted before. I think I found what true faith is. That it's just all going to work out. Um, which you'll kind of see as, as things kind of evolved, just how much that came into play. Um, so we extended out. We, you know, we were going to be three days, stayed open that week, stayed open that next weekend. We, um, uh, actually expanded our hours. We were eight to eight um, and we would do eight to eight. And then um, like Scott would do the operations here. He'd wrap up. I'd be taking care of the correspondence with social media and all the connections in the neighborhood. Like what, when I say that people reached out, I still every day get a call from someone or an email saying, I want to help. It is for as heartbreaking as so much of this is, the, the devastation, the impact on people who are just crushed and need to tell their story. Um, for every one of those stories, there are 10 heartwarming ones. Um, a soccer team that did a car wash and then walked in here with $1,000 of giant gift cards. Um, kids really i mean seeing how many kids not only did lemonade stands played the drums came in and helped um it's they felt and they knew that there was this impact on people their age um and they were so compassionate and just the the, the little notes that they would write that say you've got this you've got this, we're supporting you, we're behind you, it's gonna be okay. What about that school down in uh, Hurricane Rita affected? Yes, yeah. and they, oh, yeah, so and the connections awesome. between, it was um, uh, our high school, uh, our Brevin's high school had reached out to the uh, a Houston area school and selected them as they did a fundraiser for them during the, the school spirit week. And that same school heard about our tornado and did the reverse. Oh, a generation so, later, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah okay. years later. Um, I mean, I, I could talk for the next two days on how many different people, groups. One man did a, a Facebook fundraiser raised $4,000, went out and bought $15,000 of cleaning supplies. He had a friend who's in the hotel industry, uh, hotel supply industry. So he got hand towels, which are great rags when you have a basement that's been flooded, bleach, toiletries. I mean, just incredible. And these things just happened every day. Every day, a, a car would pull up like that and would be unload this phenomenal amount of, of items and then say, you know, what else? What else do you need? And if the answer was Gatorade, they were into Costco and got Gatorade. We actually bought out all the Gatorade in the local area. <laughs> where I'm like, oh, but don't go to the Giant in Springhouse. They haven't restocked yet. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, it was just incredible. And, and it seemed like the circle got wider and wider. I got contacted by people who were alumni. Like, oh, there are, there are a few of us in our neighborhood who are Upper Dublin alums up here in Bucks County. What's the best way we can help? Um, and we're saving Bank did it, the, uh, and many businesses pooled their funds together and then contacted us, what do you need? And they'd make the run to BJ's or to Costco or to Sam's or, you know, people brought in things. And what about the grants that you finished? The grants. So that's actually even a separate thing. And we, um, right from the beginning, we said we should have some kind of way to, um, to help with there's obviously going to be so much need. So we, um, created a fund, a separate um, Upper Dublin Tornado, assisting Upper Dublin Tornado Recovery Fund, um, which at this point we have given out over, or almost $20,000 of grants to individuals who have, you must show, and this is following all the IRS regulations and everything, um, they have actually separate guidance for disaster relief. Um, you have to not only have been impacted by the a storm or natural disaster, you have to also have financial need. So we um, have applications for anyone that was impacted um, to complete, and then they have to you know, show evidence of that financial need. Um, and we have a committee of five, and we meet um, every couple weeks and go through the applications we have. Um, but it's really you know, reached a lot of people. Um, there really weren't many sources for individual grants. I mean, there's FEMA, um, which covers certain things. People have not been impacted in the same way. Um, renters were hit incredibly hard, especially renters that didn't have insurance. Um, and then also people who had a lot of trees. If the, In most instances, if a tree fell but didn't fall on a structure, it's not covered. And when you have to bring a crane in <laughs> to move a tree it's off an electric line so that you can get power to your house after nine days, it's costly. It's very costly. It's very, very costly. And um, that is not covered. There's also a big delay for a lot of people in getting their insurance um, to cover what is needed, whether they come back and say, oh, well, we'll, we'll replace you know, this thing and that thing, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't make sense. It, it, there's a lot of back and forth. Um, a lot of people lost not only their house, they lost their cars. So there's that financial need as well. And of course, on top of all this, the school was closed for those that have kids in school. The needs, um, people had to take care of their primary needs first. Um, so that was part of how our community shop happened the way it did, is that um, you know, there was such an outpouring of generosity. And the Upper Dublin Aquatic Club did a clothing drive. And they had, I and mean, when I say stack this high on the entire twining um, clubhouse, it, it was an incredible, incredible amount of clothes. And they had very few people that came to take things. Um, there was a Halloween costume drive. There was a toy drive. I mean, all of these places had to just stop accepting donations because they were so overwhelmed. And they had to cut off a week, two weeks before they thought they'd be cutting off because there was such an outpouring. Um, so what we did with the community shop is we then took the, the leftover toys and the, the costumes that remained, and then we picked cold weather clothing and brought it in. Because when the, the UDAC, when they closed their operations, it was still 75 degrees every day. We had had a very mild September. And if you're pulling things out of your house because you, and you have limited space in your temporary housing, you're not thinking about winter coats. You're thinking about what do the kids need to wear to school this week? What do I need to wear to work? Um, you know, those things. So that's why we made things available in October. Um, and it was actually Jen's idea, Jen Bryant's idea to um, do, to have people get past part of the stigma of being in need 
I mean, we heard time after time after time, someone was like, I don't want to take that. Someone else has to need it more than me. Um, so a lot of people didn't use some of this resources, some of this wealth that had been, um, you know, generosity that had been there for them because they didn't want to take. So we had people that would come through and give us a dollar, but oh. they were paying for it. So it, the, the, the concept worked in that we were able to provide uh, those things to those who needed them when they needed them and in a way that they were able to accept them. Oh, Sally's asking a question. Oh, she might be muted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hold well, on just a second, Sally. Yeah. Um, top right corner of Sally's box. Okay. Yeah, now you're good. We can hear you. Oh. Oh. Uh, try, you know what, Dottie? Go into the dots again. Don't you ask to unmute. Do on. Okay. Okay, can you start over, Sally? Now we can hear you. Okay. Um, how does a person who needs help or a person who wants to offer help know that you exist? We have put our name out. My personal cell phone was on <laughs> hundreds of flyers that went out in the community. Um, we have now, there's a connection of 17 different organizations that are doing tornado relief. So whether it was the PTAs and the PTOs, um, UDAC, the, uh, the toy drive people, uh, everyone, we connected so that we can not be duplicating efforts and then also be able to help each other. So um, if anyone contacts the township or any of us, um, we share where the resources are for help uh, within that. Um, as far as for people who want to help, um, we primarily communicate it through the Helping Hands website. Um, there are about 5,000 people on that. On that Facebook site. page. It's a Facebook about. page. Mm -hmm. this, and then, has that been around always or? this was It was created purely for the storm. Um, it, it was a group of four women completely unaffiliated with anything um, that that's put their heads together and said, this is, this is a way we can help. And it just, just grew and grew and grew. Um, you know, it's, um, it's helped in many ways to connect. There's a, a, a meal train that they just wrapped up operations. They've been providing meals every single night since the, um, Tornado. Since the yeah. tornado beginning of September, so two and a half months of providing meals and connecting, you know, volunteers. I mean, the sign of genius has been incredible. Like, we would decide we're going to open a couple hours earlier tomorrow because we think there's a need, and I would post it at eight o'clock at night, and I would have volunteers for eight a.m. Like within an hour, I would have filled all my spots. It was just incredible how people responded and wanted to help. Um, as time went on, we had to get a little bit more creative just because you, you do get volunteer fatigue. I mean, it, it, it's hard to keep, keep it going. People had to return to their jobs, had to, you know. Um, so then we tapped um, National Honor Society um, for the students that need hours. We had um, 70 of our hours from the shop were, um, were the National Honor Society students from Upper Dublin. Um, Boy Scouts, although we had a little blip, Boy Scouts had seven cars and a trailer ready to move the toys from the pods at Maple Manor to here. And um, they had all been together the previous weekend and someone had COVID. So <laughs> we went to plan B and it all worked out. Ray Garvin and his van were fantastic. We would load it up, bring it over. We just switched up our operations. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things that, um, it, it just all it just all worked out time after time it just all worked out 
Yeah. Well, we, we know it doesn't just happen. Some, they have, you know, people, it has to be in place. Yeah, yeah. It's been, um, it's been incredible. It's been one, one God moment after another. Um, Thank you, Holy Spirit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I guess to, to wrap up where we are now and where I think we're going, which, you know, can change tomorrow. Um, we're doing Thanksgiving meals. Giant contacted us. It blew me away. We had this call. We've got two and a half pallets of cleaning supplies to bring to you. And I'm like, oh, we're past cleaning supplies, but we got those to Maddie Dixon. Um, but then we continue to partner with them. And so they're providing us with the food for this Thanksgiving. Um, we're also going to be able to do gift cards for each of the families that um, come and take the meals so that we can continue to assist them through the new year. Um, that's the next step. We're, you know, looking down the road. I mean, we're very committed to supporting this, um, knowing that people may actually need those canned goods when they move back into their house in six yeah. months yeah. or in a year. So, you know, we're, we're committed to being with them and supporting them in we're whatever way yeah. shape this takes. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's been, been an incredible, incredible journey, and it's um, it's great to see the out of something really horrible, just what good exists and and what what can happen when people come together. Well, <laughs> I'm sitting here getting a little teary. Uh, I that happens to me like nearly every every day. It's been it's yeah. been so powerful and so just moving. But I, I just need to say that here are two different stories, each essential, each serving others, each God directed without fail. And I need to go on record that this church has an abundance of this type of service as an abundance, and I will say again, for anybody who listens to this, most of these good and gracious servants and faithful servants do it just because who they are. They don't do it for any return of thank yous. They don't do it for any return of to be lifted up, but they deserve to be. They do it just because God has talked to them and leads them. And I know I speak for everybody how thankful we are to be in the presence of this type of service and this type of, of faithful love. So I, uh, yeah. my, dream, my dream is to have this wall covered with pictures of our good and faithful servants. That's my dream. So I will be coming back to you with the camera. <laughs> I think I need a bigger wall. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Small so. pictures. <laughs> <laughs> one of those million pictures that makes up one great big picture. There you yeah. go. That would be beautiful. Tracy, oh. I have a question about the, the Thanksgiving. How are you giving that food away? How are you doing it? We are separating it into um, containers that are portioned out. Um, when people fill out their form, they tell us how many people they're, they're you know, how many meals they need. Um, so we're portioning out each of the sides, the turkey, everything will be ready to eat. Are We've you doing that stuff. here? Mm -hmm. And when are you doing that? So for Douglas Next Cook Wednesday. Or, or Giant providing Wednesday. that? Um, they are providing, we're, we're doing a couple, a couple different ways because we, they, they've given us um, a total of $3,000 worth of gift cards. We're trying to um, figure out the best way because we also have other sources of funding from within the Helping Hands community. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are getting, um, someone is making for us the sides, but we need to portion them out. Um, and then we are cooking the 15 turkeys. Um, my oven's going to be going one after the other and my mother loves oven and we are cooking the 15 and slicing them up to then put in. The thing is, of course, you want everything to be fresh and ready. So, you know, Wednesday is that. Before Thanksgiving. Wednesday. Wednesday before. Yeah, we're down to one other.
Okay. Okay. Put that. I have jury duty that day on oh, the 23rd. I maybe have... you just won't get called to that. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, you, but you... I would like to. Yes, maybe absolutely. Maybe the evening. Can I yes, I think we're going to be doing all day Wednesday. I've got. Yeah. Um, Wednesday evening. Okay, yeah, I'm Wednesday. Right and, little... Yeah, we're still. I would love to help with that. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's kind of a lot of moving pieces because we um our deadline isn't until Friday to register. So you know, we don't have exact numbers, we don't know exact. So it it is, you know, faith. Faith that it's all gonna work out. And I work with some amazing ladies on Zoom calls till midnight, um, a couple times a week, you know, trying to work it all out, all the all the logistics of it. But um but we'll be getting this week. We'll be getting out volunteer information as we kind of get a better sense of how that's all going to come together. Well, thank you, thank you. both of you. What? <laughs> right into the heart. Right into the heart. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we'll see you all next week. Okay. Um, thank we'll you. Thank we'll you both of you. We'll see you very much, week. Emily. Hello. Bye, ladies. I'm down. I need to move down. <laughs> Great program. Great program. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, Bob, I'm thinking about that. I don't remember when I there was I was a sixty minute one time and the the weather forecast was horrible, so we decided kind of spur the moment that we would record might be able to cook some oh, before the service on uh, Saturday night or something. Yes, like that. Saturday afternoon. I think that's what my calendar Tuesday. And then, I and then don't have there, a Tuesday after the jury duty. Okay. Like Tad said. You know, this is my situation. Uh, you know, I babysit Jennifer. So yes. Three, so yes. Yes. It didn't work. Yes. And so we said, all right, we, cause my sister we're just going to live stream it now. Wait, so, so we started over. I have to see what the schedule yeah. will be. But I know it's definitely every Wednesday evening. You know, it's going to be available. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I think we're going, going, going to be an online on Wednesdays. We're getting the paid correct, not correct, what's the word? Recording directly on the computer. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the what he did, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, 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 ye